Hey guys, welcome to another video. So here we'll be looking to define the TWRR, otherwise known as time weighted rate of return, and using a solid example from the LSC 2016 past paper. And this is based on the CT1 curriculum. Now, let's without further ado, let's have a go into finding. So it states that another measure which tries to eliminate this effect is the time weighted rate of return. Previously, we looked at the MWRR, the money weighted version, and this deals with the initial and final value of the fund with net cash flows in between. Whereas this case, this deals with growth factors, i.e., a fund value over a, um, a future time over the previous time in, in an accumulated period. So, according to the CD1 definition, it states here that the, the rationale here is to calculate the growth factors reflecting the change in the value of the fund between the times of consecutive cash flows. So I should write it so times of consecutive cash flows. So this part here, i.e. during the periods when nothing happened. Makes sense in other words, we're going to come to that. Then to combine these growth factors to come up with an overall rate of return for the whole period. So this is what, what we can obtain. Okay. In other words, the time-weighted rate of return is found on from the product of the growth factors, i.e. from one, one fund, to, from the next one to the previous one, between consecutive cash flows. So we, of course, include any additional cash flows and following um, factors. So, checking out the formula, this is how the formula actually looks like. So, as we're staying, we start with a fund value 0 and the fund value T1 minus. So, the minus indicates the time just before time 1. So, suppose we pin F0 to be the 1st of January of, say, any year. This would be the following year, but one day back, say, 31st of December of the following year. Whereas F type, whereas the fund at time one would be the first of Jan, F time one minus means the thirty first of December. And same same thing here. This is the initial cash flow, which is usually, as it says, if any. Most of the time you don't have a cash flow. You don't usually get that because then that'll be that's usually incorporated in the initial fund. The further ones, cash time one, and this is again this this is the the next cash flow at time one, cash flow at time two, and so on. All evaluated at one plus I T I being the time weighted rate of return. And T, capital T being the the total period, as in from the first from the initial from the from um, the initial fund to the to the last one time period. Now, let's jump straight in. An example. So here we have a fund that had a value of one thousand on the first of Jan of twenty thirteen, and success, and um, afterwards there was a net cash flow of one hundred seventy was received on the first of Jan twenty fourteen, and a further five hundred another year later. The value of the fund at the end of the year of the at the fund of 31st December 2013 was 1030 and, and on the following year at the same time was 1200. Now here they want us to calculate the TWR, I want to calculate that, between the 1st of January 2013 to the 31st December 2015. So notice I added an extra year here. I just did this for the, for the case of um, understanding how cash flows run. Because we have a second cash flow, we need a further point in time. So here we decided to assume that the fund on the 1st of December was 1788. Okay, let's crack on the formula. So let me just pull out the formula from a slide I copied. There we go, paste. Now, all you want to do is pretty much identify the term. So using this formula, so this is the exact formula, the growth factors. Yeah, each term is a growth factor. Now, from the very beginning, let's start labeling. So we have a value for 1000 on the 1st of Jan. So this is effectively time zero. So this is 1000. So we can say here that F0, I'll make it underneath, equals 1000. Next one, the net cash flow of 170 was received on the 1st of Jan. So one year later on 2014, cash one was 170. And again, a further 500 a year later. So cash two equals 500. Now, what else do we have? Now, this is the important part. The value of the fund on the 31st of December 2013, so at the end of the first time, but one day back, so we call this F1 minus or T1 minus. This would reflect this cash. And the fund here was 1030. And again, one year later, it was 1200. So F2 minus was 1200. And because we've, we're doing it at this point in time, 31st December, okay, okay, I should add this is the 31st December of 2015, yeah? So the total time period here is between the 1st of Jan 2013 to this date. If we calculate carefully, you'll notice that this is exactly 3 years. So T equals 3. That's the total time period. 
Now, what we're going to do is replace every single term here and find value i. So yeah, one thing to know is that because we're stopping at time 2, we literally we don't need this part and we don't need the rest. So this is the equation we're working with. So therefore, let me put a line there. So therefore, we're going to have 1 plus i, t being power 3, would equal the fund value time 1 over the fund and cash flow at time 0. So this is 1030 over... 1000 because there's no cash flow, there's no um, initial cash times, and the second one would be time two, so 1200 over the first year cash flow, which is 1030 plus the first cash flow, 170. And oops, oops, you know, I made a mistake here actually. There is a, there is a third cash flow because I obviously included a, a fund value at time three. So, yeah, so we're going to include this one too. That makes more sense, yeah. So this is the fund value of time three. So we're gonna times again all of this by the fund value time three, which is one seven eight eight point oh eight, all over. Where is it? Fund two, twelve hundred. So yeah, guys. Even even professors can make a mistake. Trust me. There's a, it's very easy to slip up here. So be very careful digits. But you have to kind of think logically because I was thinking there was cash two was missing in time three. So definitely think about it. you got three time periods. You're expecting three growth factors. And that's it. Evaluate all of this. And I haven't done that. But you want to, but then once you calculate this, cube root it and then take away one. And you should get on the next slide. I got it to be 1.7%. And that's it, guys. Um, I hope this TWR helped. And uh, let me know if you've got any more examples. I'll be happy to do more. And trust me, this after you complete all this, it'll be it'll be fine. Anyway. Ah, I need to relax. All I want to say is um, take care, guys, and let me know if you have any more questions. Please share these videos with your friends. I have a CT1 playlist in the description below. And, um, yeah, share that as well. Share with anybody in your classmates, anyone review CT1, and hopefully you guys can all pass that, that first paper. And good luck with the next ones. Until then, ciao, guys.